Okay. Everybody just joining, we're just going to wait um, one more minute until we hit time and then we'll go ahead and start the, present, start the session. Okay, we are at time. And so given that we only have an hour, we thought we would go ahead and get started straight away and pe people can join us as they, as they want. Welcome everybody. We're very pleased to present to you a conversation around the key linkages between governance and non-revenue water, learning lessons from Jordan and some of the incredible challenges and successes that they're facing right now. Um, just to let everybody know, uh, my name is Barbara Rossmiller. I am the director of our Water and Sustainable Cities practice at Commonics International. We are implementing the USAID funded water governance activity in Jordan. And I am joined here by members of, our, of the project team from the water governance activity, as well as some leading counterparts from water institutions in Jordan. We have Tamar Al-Assad, who is our deputy chief of party for the WGA program. Muna Bataine, who is with the Water Authority of Jordan, Abdullah Al Jara, who is with Miyahuna Water Company, and Ghazi Halil Abdullah. You can see their bios in the chat, but in the interest of time, um, please go ahead and, and check out their incredibly illustrious backgrounds. You can see that we've got assembled a really amazing collection of expertise, and every single member of the group today has spent decades literally collectively over a hundred years trying to work to improve and make the, the efficiency and effectiveness of Jordan's water sector um, in response to tremendous challenges and, and extreme water scarcity. So the, the session today is going to first start with Palmer providing a presentation, kind of providing background about the situation and some of and what's happening right now in terms of really focusing on governance elements for the sector, but specifically for non-revenue water reduction and what effect that's having. And then we're gonna to turn to our panel to share their experiences and observations of just the way in which things are working right now for the sector and where the sector is going in addressing these, uh, th these issues. So without any further ado, because I want to make sure that our team actually has the chance to, to be featured here, I'm gonna turn it over to Tamar who has a Bocera's presentation, and then we will um, we'll take it from there. Palmer? Yeah. Thank you, Barbara, uh, for introducing me. <clears throat> hello, hello, everybody. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, and please let me know if, if you see my PowerPoint presentation. Perfect. So as Barbara said, I'm going to do a brief presentations on, on the non-revenue water uh, reductions, recent efforts, and how we link it with the water governance principles in Jordan to uh, to be to enable reducing the revenue water in Jordan before going to questions to the panel. So before going to more specific on the non-revenue, let me go on the quickly on the agenda. So I'm going to give an overview of the current situation in Jordan, quick facts about the water and the governance structures and the challenges that we face usually on revenue water. <clears throat> and then why uh, a change actually is needed in the way we are handling revenue water and uh, the core uh, of, uh, of the new approach that was documented through the revenue reduction strategy. Uh, which has a comprehensive approach uh, uh, that's going beyond the infrastructure needs, and then uh, giving one slide presenting the results up to date uh, that we were able to achieve with the water sector. So uh, Jordan, for the people who doesn't know, it is actually located in the Middle East. Uh, it's one of the most scarce countries in the world in terms of water uh, resources availability. Uh, currently, in 2021, we only had around 61 cu cubic meter per capita on an annual basis uh, for the different uh, water uses, with basically from renewable fresh water uh, availability. 
and uh, that is way below the 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 water scarcity line, which is at one thousand uh, cubic meter, and absolute water scarcity at five hundred. So Jordan is very scared of the waters, and this is will be continue uh, to decrease because of the rapid population growth and the climate change impact that would reduce the available fresh water by fifteen percent uh, by twenty forty. That will lead or will lead to have only thirty five cubic meter day. So this is a key characters for Jordan. If you compare to the international and other uh, indicators, we are very very far in water scarcity. Uh, on the governance structures, Jordan has, uh, let's say, we can classify the, the water sector entity into three layers. We have a planning and over a policy and oversight layer, which is mainly the Ministry of Water and Irrigation, with, uh, with some support also from the utility performance monitoring units that oversight the water company's uh, performance. Uh, and uh, it has some role, the Ministry in the Water Resources and Capital Investment. On the middle, we have the Water Authority of Jordan, uh, which is mainly responsible for the development of water resources and groundwater monitoring, but also has some overlaps on the policy and service delivery. We have also Jordan Valley Authority in the Jordan Valley, responsible for irrigation system and surface water management. And the core uh, we have under the service delivery and operation maintenance, we have the water companies, which is mainly the ones who is delivering the water services and are in charge of reducing the non-revenue water. Uh, and we have the water user associations that manage some of irrigation systems in the Jordan Valley. So this is the current the current water structure in Jordan. Uh, if if we touch base on the key uh, results over the last years in terms of non-revenue waters, you can see from the charts during the year 2010, 2021, we actually have an increasing uh, non-revenue percentage. If you look at the red lines, which show the, the increase of the non-revenue water, we have a continuous increase from a good performance relatively in 2010 at 40%, till we have uh, the percentage reached 51%. The main reason for that, it was we have the Syrian refugee flux starting in 2011, and then we have a mega project called DC water supply, water supply, which has increased the supply by 25% in 2020, in 2012. That also lead to more supply in the system, which basically also leading to more losses. From that time till uh, th since 2014, when the DC came in, we actually have almost a stable non revenue and we have not really able to achieve any noticeable reductions. In fact, it was increasing most of the time, despite of the large investment. So that's that's the historical performance of the non revenue water. Now, uh, for those who doesn't know what's mean the non revenue water, or some would call it the water losses, it mainly has two components. Uh, there is the commercial components, and there is the physical components. And that the commercial usually uh, of this the, the types two types, but the, under the commercial there is two three components usually related to meter accuracy, billing issues, and illegal use. And under the physical type we have the leakage. And of course, there is different causes for each one. Under the meters, usually it's about uh, audit meters, dysfunctional meters, uh, uh, defective and, and wrong installations meters. These are key causes, and this is one of the samples from the field in, in Jordan. It's a destroyed meters. In the mailing issues, of course, related to the estimated readings, uh, errors in, 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 in readings, or, uh, or even uh, not able to locate the customers. Uh, on the illegal use, which is a major issue in Jordan, uh, we have a lot of inactive customers that use water illegally, some uh, social and cultural perspective or perceptions about having water for free, and of course, tempering and vandalism of the networks and uh, using the water. And on the leakage, uh, of course, it's related to higher pressure, visible leaks and invisible leaks. Uh, we have an issue of redundant network and dirty networks. So these are key causes that usually contributing to the non-revenue uh, percentages. Uh, and if we talked about the, the Jordan, we have we facing the several challenges related to usually the two the two types, physical and commercial. And which is known by uh, for everybody as described related to the meterings and billings for the commercials related to the network issues in terms of pressures, uh, uh, leaks, uh, speed of repairs, etc., and the infrastructure conditions. But there is also key challenges in terms of uh, an institutional capacity that we, we there is an issue of lacking the human resources and the financial capacity, plus uh, to have sufficient systems and equipment 
to manage the, the system effectively. And of course, there is a lack of uh, or insufficient uh, information related to the systems monitoring and measurement, either water flow or pressure, or even uh, the, 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 the maintenance and customers. On the top of that, as I, as I described, we have a very limited water supply that lead also a big challenge that we supply water on intermittent water supply, which mean most of Jordan area is receiving water once per week. And that's another big challenge on how you can manage system with really high intermittent supply with limited, sub, limited causes. So usually, uh, the, the, the as we said that we over the last six, seven years, there was uh, almost no progress in reducing water. So there was a need to have a change. So why we needed the, the change? Because Jordan, uh, the water sector is receiving uh, uh, a lot of investment to, to, to actually to do uh, work on infrastructure, uh, uh, water infrastructure to reduce the revenue, but still the losses is still high. And of course, these losses, if it is high, it's basically... We are losing a, a valuable resource that we don't have much, which is the water, but also we are losing a big financial uh, losses out of that. So there is a need also to, to have a change of, of conventional investment approach to have a more holistic approach that does not really rely on investment. And this ha this approach has to be common and guided, guiding the future a project and actions within the different water utilities in Jordan, where it can also clearly show where and how and when to start these, these actions and how can be actually working under the conditions of intermittent water supply. So as WGA, Water Governance Act, US Water Governance Activity Project, we work with the water sector over the last two years. So we were trying to develop the comprehensive approach that's actually not only relying on, on the, the investment, we like also on, on the management uh, approach, the perspective of management and the governance. And of course, we, we, we visited, we have a, we visited the previous efforts, we have a big lesson learned, and we th thought how we can be a comprehensive and how we can help the sector prioritize their actions. And at the end, we ensure the sustainability of whatever actions and results we are doing. For this, uh, we again, we try to develop the comprehensive approach uh, based on uh, the four, uh, what we call it four key pillars that is actually extracted from the key challenges. And the pillars started with, with actually sequence. We have to have a good institutional capacity uh, where we have a capable and with equipment uh, institutional capacity. And then we need to have a proper measurement and monitoring for the system so we can define the issues and the gaps and then uh, being able to do the prioritizations and the correction of the corrective actions. Plus, uh, and there is a key, key, key follow-up on the commercial losses that we can do in advance to the physical losses because the investment there is, is a higher return because it's, it's a, usually it's a shortened period that you can do a lot in a, in a faster approach and also financially is less, less expensive than physical losses. And then the end we address the physical losses, which has usually a longer time frame and uh, important of course, to reduce the physical losses, which is the actual water that is usually uh, not used by anybody. Uh, this approach has a sequence and has also linked it with the contextual uh, uh, and specific, special characteristics of each water system. Uh, and that's why, the approach uh, try to uh, to link uh, the process with uh, with uh, with actually uh, with 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 the with the sustainability and part of of the sustainability requirement is is, is to, to look at the national level or sector level and utility level where uh, the approach try to define clear and define clear, clearly the responsibilities and certain national policies and the standards which is a key principles in the governance, uh, usually that you have to have clear rules and responsibilities and uh, targets and also at the utility level uh, by uh, working on the different uh, components and the leaderships and, and the processes, systems and the staff operations and having the knowledge transferred to the, to the different level within the utilities. Of course, uh, the comprehensive approach was, is described in detail in the net revenue strategy in summary, uh, this chart is actually showing the approach where we have the non-revenue water centers at the, at the middle, 
and we have the four pillars around uh, around uh, actually the net revenue and these pillars actually all uh, will lead to reduce the net revenue waters each pillar has has a certain outcomes which can be uh, described uh, sorry which can be this uh, measured with uh, with a specific indicators and uh, there is within each within each pillar there is set of actions and for each action there is an indicator which is where we create accountabilities because here we know where we want uh, what is the what is the outcomes at current the, the situations and then we we know how to measure it with a specific indicators and uh, as part of the comprehensive approach there is also what we call it foundations actions that has to be done even if if it if if it if, even if if you want to do the rest you need to do this before so we can achieve uh, we can achieve to 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 move forward to the next actions the good thing about the comprehensive approach is it's describing the the approach in a in a step uh, step by step so there is a sequence that the utilities has to to do within the context of each one of course uh to to do this uh, also uh, to do this uh, I will describe later on what we did is 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 will helping the the utilities to streamline uh, the work uh, as part of the strategy we had agreed on uh, the targets on the national targets for from fifty two percent in twenty twenty one we need to reduce it to twenty to twenty five percent by uh, twenty forty and there is a six uh, logic behind the reductions expected by by each year that will not go into details. Uh, the the good thing about the comprehensive approach that for each outcomes, as I said, we have a target, we have an indicators, we have an optimal targets that will be used. So the idea is that each utility will do an assessment for their uh, basically outcomes, and based on the outcomes, we define the gaps. And if we define the gaps, as we can show here as a, a sample, this is the different utilities with the governorate with the with the with the, with the part of the actions. And you can see the green one is like we are doing somehow good, but there is there is much much areas which has a high deficit. There is a big gap here that which means we need to work on certain actions. Then the utilities based on these gaps actually they do develop their actions and priorities, which will need of course resources and and projects and actions and and that goes. Of course. There is a monitoring uh, cycle, which is very important. So for each gap, there is a monitoring uh, of the targets for for each year. And these this, this were uh, reported on, an, on a regular basis uh, and actions are revised. So it's actually updated based on the actual result on, on the ground. That's That will help utilities to have really a specific roles, responsibilities with specific targets. And of course, that also helped the management to see the gaps and try to, to at the water sector to also allocate the, the needed resources to achieve this result and of course, to sustain them. Uh, of course, the, as a project, we supported the water sector uh, to, to facilitate this process. Uh, the approach was very participatory. So we were working with the, with the national level on developing the strategy that was adopted. Then we worked with the utilities through formulated task forces and with the net revenue units, uh, there as well as a knowledge transfers and doing and learning by doing uh, the actions and then monitoring them with a regular basis. So that also was a key thing that everybody was involved and participating in implementing and understanding and developing the approach. The monitoring, as I said, is a key aspect where uh, there is different monitoring level at a national level uh, on, on the from the ministry, and my colleagues will describe this more. And of course, at the utility level and the governorate level, uh, so we have uh, a clear responsibilities on how to make this happen. Uh, the good uh, over the last year, we have some good achievement over 2022. And this is just showing the first year result of, of implementing this approach. And you can see on the right side, on the national level, the target was to achieve 2%, uh, but the, the achievement was actually better, is 2.7% reduction in revenue water from around 52.6 to around 50%. Uh, and that's uh, that's a big achievement. Most of utilities also has a positive, uh, you can see the green, uh, the green uh, bars that all of them has the good reductions on the revenue water, except for a few. But in general, this is this is the key achievement out of this result. And we are looking for the next year or this year actually achievement. Currently for the first six months or the first, uh, say, two quarters, which is the billing cycle in Jordan, there is also positive result is ongoing. 
that's in a brief on the approach and how we try to link the governance principles, particularly rules, responsibilities, accountability, transparency, monitoring, and sustainability practices embedded in the strategy, uh, in the revenue strategy that now we are supporting with the water sector to execute. And thank you, and I will leave it to Barbara for to continue the session. Thank you very much, Summer. A couple of quick questions before we go to the panel. So you, you demonstrated how governance principles of kind of monitoring and accountability are, are embedded in the strategy. But you know, when you talked about the four pillars for non-revenue water reduction, they were institutional capacity, kind of measuring, monitoring, and control, then commercial losses and physical losses. Governance isn't there. So how do you see governance commitments more broadly being central to non-revenue water reduction? Yeah, of course, part of this is actually we have the top management uh, support from the water sector on, on, executing, the, on executing the strategy and uh, clarifying the responsibility among the different uh, counterparts or the different utility organizations. So we have, we have, as initially said, we have the water companies responsible for service delivery and operating the system. But we have also the Water Authority of Jordan, which is actually owning the water companies, and they are in charge of the capital investments. So there is, uh, there is, a two, uh, there is two parties, main parties responsible to, to implement uh, the strategy. The utility was actually running the business, but also the Water Authority, which is funding the, the investment. And with the limited financial resources, priorities has to be actually defined. Uh, we cannot do everything. How we can define that? The pillars and the outcomes and defining the gaps help the sector to define where is the priorities should be? Where can I put my investment? We don't have a lot of money to do everything at once. And of course, there is a sequence. We need to have the best value for money. Uh, that's also uh, helped to implement uh, the, the, the governance and principle through creating a clarity on the responsibilities and the gaps and who's doing what. And of course, uh, then being everybody is accountable for, for the result. It's not, it's not only the revenue units, for example, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's everybody in the utility responsibilities, again, in the water sector within, within, within the, the framework of watch and the ministry. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I'm going to turn it, I'm going to open the conversation now to include our panel. And we are really, really fortunate with the panel that we have here today. So as I said, Mona Batina is representing is, is the Water Authority of Jordan. So she's able to provide us with a really good insight into what's happening at the national governance level within the country. Abdullah is joining us from Miahuna Water Company, so the biggest utility in Jordan. Um, and so we, we've got then a really good perspective from Abdullah in terms of the actual tactical operational challenges for, again, at, at, at the biggest level that we see um, to execute non-revenue water reduction. And he's the head of our non-revenue water unit within Miahuna. And then Ghazi joins us. And, and Ghazi is in the unique role of having worked for literally decades and decades on within Miahuna, but now has turned his attention to supporting the utility operations within the other governorates. So we're able to get the perspective from the smaller utilities and some of the operational implementation challenges that we're seeing across the rest of Jordan as well. So with that as kind of an understanding of why we've got these amazing people gathered here today, I wanna to ask a couple of questions. I also suggest if people want who are joining us to, to go to gallery view, then you'll be able to see everybody kind of all at the same time. And our first question, and I'm gonna start um, this question to you, Mona, and then I'm going to ask Abdullah then Ghazi to answer as well, is why do you think we're seeing the non-revenue water reduction results that Tom or just presented when you had so many years of essentially no change? Yeah, unfortunately. Hi, everyone. Uh, unfortunately, we had a lot of years that we didn't have any change. Um, I have been um, overseeing non-revenue since a year now uh, in WAJ and now belonging to the minister directly. Uh, I would say that we started from the strategy. The strategy made this a huge shift of the understanding of non-revenue and how it should be done or reduced. So it is more um, it is more uh, practical 
it is derived into action plans that the companies can easily implement. Uh, with this strategy, now the awareness is different. Now, exactly the definition of non-revenue, how you can tackle the reduction is more, the people are aware uh, on, a, on a technical level and on a decision makers level. Just to add up the donors, they did a lot of work with the donation for, uh, generous donation for the non-revenue water reduction. So all of it, it made an, a collaborative actions that helped uh, WAJ or the water sector to reduce uh, the non-revenue for this year. Alhamdulillah. Excellent. Thank you, Mona. Abdullah, the same question to you, please. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody. <clears throat> First of all, it is the, the water scarcity in Jordan uh, that we need to reduce the non-revenue for water uh, because we... we, we, we we shall assume it as new resources of water. That's why it is very important. Uh, why it's happened now and why it's it's work, thank God. Because uh, later, uh, at, before, uh, the, there were no, no awareness, as engineer Muna mentioned. Uh, yani you can imagine that uh, Miyahuna is the only utility that have uh, a special unit uh, dedicated to, to reduce the non-revenue for water equipped with the with a lot of uh, technicians and engineers working uh, on, on, on the main uh, pillars of non-revenue for water this is first secondly uh, 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 it is a commitment the commitment is cascading down to the the utility it is a target now so it, uh, the the people started to feel it is very important and it's, that's why uh, again uh, we started to create a, a new ded a dedicated specialist unit to reduce the revenue for water in all the utilities, in all the gov uh, gov government uh, of Jordan. Nowadays, there is a committee in Miyahuna, for example, uh, responsible to, to follow up and monitor the, 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 the action plan needed to reduce the revenue for water from each governorate. Uh, we have uh, like a, a monthly meeting discussing all the, 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 the challenges, all the, the figures that we have and uh, focusing more and more. In, in, in parallel, we are working also on the strategies and SOBs of, of how we are measuring the non-revenue for water. And where we have to focus uh, to, to, to be online with the, the, the national strategy of reducing the non-revenue for water. Uh, something else that uh, I want to, to just emphasize, you know, uh, in Miyahuna, for example, my utility, uh, we are working on non-revenue for water for a long time before. It is not that we, 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 we couldn't reduce it. Yani, from my point of view, uh, at least we can we maintained it the the the, the non revenue for water uh, because uh, the 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 situation of water supply in Jordan is very unique very harsh we do have intermittent supply uh, in average thirty five hours per week. That's mean the, 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 the network will be empty for the, for the rest of time. And that caused a lot of a problem and that put the network under very, very, very harsh conditions. So uh, maintaining the non-revenue for water is a challenge. Yes, we are now looking forward to, to reduce it and we are working on that, but it is very, very, uh, very difficult. This is from my point of view as I, I am managing and working on the non-revenue for water 20 years ago. Uh, yani the, the condition is very harsh. Uh, nowadays, as, I, as, as we all mentioned, and uh, we have a commitment and we created a, a special groups in each uh, governorate to, to reach the, the target. This is the most important the awareness of all, and then start working hand in hand. Terrific, thank you so much, Abdullah. Gavi? Gavi? 
Gazi, you're on mute. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Perfect. Actually, as long as Abdullah, you know, mentioned something regarding Miyahuna, I'll not repeat what's in Miyahuna, but I'm going to talk you know, about the rest of the, uh, the, the, the country, northern and southern Gubernadet. Actually, in addition to the, you know, why, 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 actually, why we have achieved these two or two point seven percent, you know, uh, in addition to the top management committee, let us be, uh, you know, honest. You know, if we are subdividing this management into three levels: top management, middle management, and you know the doers. Let us see. Actually, there is a commitment from the top management. From, from the minister down to the secretary general, CEOs, general managers, their assistants. But if we tackle the middle management, which is the two important, you know, by the way, if we are going to achieve something, middle management has to be has to understand what's going on. Honestly speaking, uh, middle management until now, they Yes, the understanding, but not fully. Hopefully, hopefully that, you know, by uh, uh, the training, by uh, orientation, they will be better uh, in, in, in future. Uh, in addition to that, you know, let us, uh, if we are talking, you know, in, in Northern Gubernate, as example, you know, Northern Gubernate, if you look into the uh, figures, there is no changes at all in the non revenue water uh, percent. It is due to weak institutional capacity, skilled manpower, equipment. You know, yes, they have had before, but you know, due to the changes in the management for over there, you know, there is no real achievement. Uh, if you look into, you just look into the number of defective meters over there. It's a huge number. The accuracy of the water meter, the billing ratio, it's a, it's really it's a mess. If you go to to south, the story is something different. You know that yes, they are willing at south, they are willing to learn, they are willing to understand. Because of that, there are some changes, and we when did we offer for them incentive schemes at the exam? We have been asked by the minister to do this scheme. In South, they applied. Because of that, there are tangible results in all over Gabonese, except for Aqaba. In spite of that, Aqaba has, has a continuous supply, but there are some other factors. Why did the, why the NRW, NRW in Aqaba has raised by 3%? It's due to the illegal users. We, can, we will say later on about this. Mainly, I believe that we have, if that the, the, the reason behind achieving this result is the commitment. I can tell you from my experience, you know, that they, they were, and the understanding for the non revenue water before it was the operation, operation and maintenance responsibility. I can tell you that none of the departments, including the customer service department, were understand that this is part from their responsibility even they are they are sharing everything so now everybody all departments customer service uh, department uh, operation and maintenance technical service including human resources all all employees they are they they feel that this is their business this is one of the main ch main changes during the past two years Terrific. Thank you. That's, that's great. So then shifting gears a little bit, we now want to, you know, it's not just a one year target, right? This is, this is a, a series of targets to continue to reduce NRW through to 2040. So what is the biggest challenge you see to sustain this kind of progress? And also, by the way, I do see the, the questions coming in the chat. Please keep them coming. I'm going to build them in as we go along. But Abdullah, I'd like to start with you. You know, you're you're the head of the non-revenue water unit at Miyahuna. 
you're this is this is your job day in and day out so how do you you know what do you see is the biggest challenge to sustain the the advancements that you're making and the success that you're seeing in non-revenue water reduction okay uh, from my point of view and from our experience uh, uh, th th there's a lot of challenges facing us regarding the, the, the reducing of non-revenue for water. For example, we do have a technical issues. Uh, with the most important uh, challenge that we have is the, 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 the lack of, uh, of water supply. I mean, the, the intermittent supply. Uh, th that is reflected on, the, on, the, on, on many aspects technically. Uh, we do have a lot of surge and water hammer in the network and that cause a lot of breaks uh, we do have uh, the wet and the dry and that on, on the pipe itself from inside and that affect the, the, the material itself and the brittility of the, of the material and cause a lot of, 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 of uh, uh, breaks and reduce the, the, the age, uh, the supposed age of the, of the network and pipe. Uh, in, 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 the, in, in the management issue, we do have a, a short time of to, to detect and uh, leak uh, the, the, the invisible leak. So for example, in, in, in some places in Amman, we do have only one or two hours to, 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 to sounding on the network to detect leak because the, the network is not pressurized. There is a lot of filling and consumption on, uh, while the, the water is running. That's why uh, the, the network is not pressurized enough to, 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 to hear if there is a leak using the, the sounding equipment. Another uh, thing that uh, we, uh, we face, uh, uh, we do have some contamination regarding the hygienic because of, of intermittent supply. Uh, uh, if, if we move to, 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 to the institutional, uh, as I mentioned, we, we do not uh, have uh, awareness in all the govern, uh, government of, uh, um, of Jordan regarding the importance of non-revenue for water. So we, do, we don't have, uh, we have a lack of experience actually in a, a lot of government. Uh, also, even in the, in the local market, there is no specialist uh, uh, companies uh, can work to reduce the non-revenue for water. If we go to international companies, they are not aware of the intermittent supply. So, so it, it, I think from my, from my point of view, the most important and the most biggest challenge is the, 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 the intermittent supply. It causes a lot of problem to, to, to the network. Yani, I don't want to talk about investment and funds needed to, 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 to maintain uh, the, the, the non-revenue for water results, but it is obviously uh, common for all the utility. Thank you. I, I'm seeing some interesting related comments and questions in the chat. You know, one of them is about the issue around involving local communities and public awareness. Do you see, you know, what role do you think that kind of public awareness in the, in the local communities play in non-revenue water reduction? And can they be an ally in overcoming some of these challenges? And I think I'd ask that of both Abdullah and Ghazi. And yeah, yes, there is, uh, let's say, there is uh, no, no good awareness in the public community. Yeah, for example, uh, if we go to the call center and have the, 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 what we receive as a complaints for, for, for breaks and, 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 and leaks from the network, okay, we will find a number. But if we do have a focus on, on some area and do a campaign to, to, to pinpoint uh, the, the visible and invisible leak, the, 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 the number is tripled, for example. That's mean, you know, we do need to communicate more and more with the with the community, with the local community. We do have uh, an outreach unit in Miahuna. We are trying to do a lot of session uh, uh, with the associations, with the uh, social uh, associations, with the schools, 
uh, in order to raise up the awareness regarding the the uh, the, the plagues, uh, to, to complain about the plagues, uh, the, the, the the sorry the plagues, and uh, to, to communicate with Miyahuna regarding if there is any illegal usage uh, in the area that uh, the the people live. But yes, we, we need we need to strengthen and and work more and more. If you allow me, Abdullah, can I say something? Please, God, yes. 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 Actually, if we are going to tackle this part, you know, we have to talk about the demand management first of all. You know that you know that everybody has to manage the situation. We all all uh, you know uh, citizens in Jordan they are fully aware about the scarcity of water. Everybody knows that we don't have enough water. As what my Tamer mentioned, sixty. 60 cubic meters, you know, per year, while in the other countries, it's 1,000. We are far away. So the demand manage management is one of the issues. The second issue is, you know, that uh, due to the intermittent supply, there are a lot of breaks. It's visible leaks, which is mean that everybody, everybody could report for that. One. We are now in MIA, we are now in WGA, we are trying to support Miyahuna for customer service application, which, the, which will give, you know, opportunity for everybody to, to uh, you know, complain or to register his complaint. So in addition to that, we should not forget the illegal uses. These, these campaigns has to tackle this. Everybody, ha everybody has to understand why, why you see, you know, notice anybody stealing water, he is stealing your share. So those, this is what I would like to say in, that, in terms of this uh, campaign. Thank you, Hazi. And Mona, just quickly, like one minute. For the government, then, what is the, what is your response? What is the responsibility, you know, in kind of continuing to sustain these these gains? You know, you're wearing your button, two percent, right? Two percent reduction a year. So, yeah. what else is, is Wadge and the, and the ministry um, need? What do they need to do to meet this challenge? So the 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 minister has created one uh, unit that is directly uh, connected to the minister. And then this unit is obliged to quarterly uh, measure uh, the non-revenue in the not to measure but to report the non-revenue of each utility. We have twelve utilities in Jordan, each four with one company. So we have three companies in all uh, running through uh, all Jordan. So we report the quarterly percentage of non-revenue um, and um, advising about the actions and maybe um, how they can reduce the non-revenue in uh, cooperation with uh, the donors, with cooperation with WGA, with cooperation with, with uh, uh, programs uh, donated by donors. Excellent, thank you. Um, uh, so that's quite, did you want to add one, one other thing, Ghazi? Yes, regarding the, you know, the, the sustainability of the achievement, Actually, if we are going to also tackle this issue, we can talk about the institutional part, you know, where we are, all our governorates are suffering from insufficient map work. This is one of the main issues. And as I said, you know, since the beginning, the understanding of the business at the medium level. Medium level is the, one of the main, you know, players. In addition to that, weak reporting system. You know that we have to admit that the reporting system, you know, in all over governorates, you know, north and south of the part I'm talking about, you know, they are practicing, you know, very weak reporting system, and this will reduce the opportunity to take to tackle data or to, to driven uh, decisions. You know. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the, we, the lack of uh, resources, I'm talking about the maintenance. You know, you can imagine that the maintenance, the maintenance budget always far below from the, 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 the standard, I mean the international standard. Yes, this is, this is true, actually. We need to sustain the achievement. 
And the problem with the, 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 the maintenance sustainability, it, it needs a lot of, of money actually to, to maintain the, 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 the achievement. Uh, while we do have uh, very li very uh, limited uh, budget for the, the, the maintenance. I mean, when, when, I'm, when I'm saying maintenance, I mean the replacement of deteriorated pipe. I mean the 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 the, 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 the preventive and uh, active and uh, maintenance. Not only the, the, the maintenance of uh, fixing the leak. The maintaining of pressure in the in the, in the distribution zone. This is this is very important. I mean, so you guys have raised a couple issues that actually take me to skipping a question. I'll come back to the other ones. But what you're raising are the real challenges for the reducing the physical losses, right? And I think that you know, obviously, from talking with you all, I I, I just happen to have some inside information that you know the a lot of the existing reductions have really been driven by reducing commercial losses, right? And, and those will have to be sustained. And it sounds like, you know, from, from the comments you've all made today that, you know, again, with continued commitment and continued focus on the institutional capacity to manage commercial losses, that, that, that's able to be sustained. That's not where people are worried. The challenge now really is going to come from addressing the physical losses, right? And trying to really shift and achieve the same kinds of results when you start dealing with the physical losses. So I'd really like to kind of hear from you. What do you think are the most important elements to be able to do that? Abdullah, you talked right now about partly about investment, right? And to me, this is where the governance side is so important, right? Because you either that investment has to be funded, but that requires a commitment to cost recovery targets and some of the actions right around either tariff generation, you know, tariff adjustments or other kind of budgetary support. Um, you know, Kazi, the utilities you're working with are kind of at a different level from Miyahuna. So where do you, you know, I'd like to hear from all three of you about where you see the biggest opportunities are to sustain this pace of non-revenue water reduction as things turn to physical losses. Maybe Ghazi, then Abdullah, then Mona. Actually, uh, if we are going to talk about physical losses, you know, we have to admit all that uh, the network everywhere in, in, in uh, Jordan, except for Amman, it's not me, I'm talking Amman, maybe, are not ready, are not ready to tackle the, phys the physical losses as a comprehensive, comprehensive approach. I'm not talking that they, they have to continue repairing, the, fixing the repair. But you know that there are no uh, restructuring in all over water networks in, uh, in, in Jordan except for Amman, and they already started in Erbil doing some. You know, in, in, yes, excuse me, in Aqaba, we have to also, in addition to Aqaba, Aqaba they have. Once you have this, it means that you can, you can tackle the pressure. You know, the biggest impact from the physical part is the reduction of the pressure. Once you reduce the pressure, you gain a lot. Here, Everywhere in, 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 in uh, let us say, the majority of the governorates, they cannot do that because they don't have DMAs. They don't have, you know, distribution areas. The majority of uh, areas used to be supplied direct from the pumping units, which has been the pressure is over 15, over 16 bar, which is tremendous. While in Amman, as example, they are doing gravity supply in 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 uh, in, uh, in uh, Aqaba the same they started doing this also in some other in in, in northern part in, in Erbil in some parts but not, but not everywhere but still they have to maintain the cooperative approach among the department as they call it they have to admit also that the, the tackling the physical part it doesn't mean having more capital investment in addition to that, 
we have to understand you know that in Jordan here I'm not I'm not going to criticize the contractors mainly the contractors when they, when when do they start doing any construction for any contract they have no the culture of Northern water reduction they don't apply the water supply systems they are they used to do the replacement of the pipes or reinforcement of the pipes. They don't understand the concept. This is one of the main issues that has to be also taken even by the government. The government. They have to make sure that the contractors are understanding the concept and the purpose behind having any project. In addition to you know, the, the, the operation and maintenance guide. This is in, in general. So basically further kind of staff capacity and institutional development is critical. Abdullah, just, I, I, can you give me a one minute answer, please? I'm just in the interest of time and we do have a couple of questions I want to address in the chat and one final question for you all as well. Any the most benefit from the, the, this program that we are working now as a team, uh, there's some kind of regu regularity now uh, monitoring and uh, following up uh, the, the, the whole project. Uh, we do have a list of projects and initiatives now. Uh, this is the, we do have an SOPs. Uh, this is the most benefit. What we do need to, to, to maintain and sustain uh, is, uh, is, is, is to keep working on the, on the awareness of, of, of the employees, uh, as Engineer Ghazi mentioned, the, the middle, and also the, the, the awareness of public regarding the leak and the uh, legal issue. We, we do have to, to keep cascading the, the importance of non-revenue for water. And we are working to create an incentive program scheme to, 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 to help improving and uh, keeping. Uh, we are doing kind of outsourcing uh, some activities that helping to, to uh, the, the utility to, to reduce uh, response time uh, for leaks, uh, for example. Uh, that's all. Terrific. And Mona, what about you? Uh, I wanted to say that we have to understand that commercial losses, they have these quick wins that you don't have to pay a lot, but you get uh, a real uh, swift uh, reduction in the non-revenue. While in the physical actions, the physical reduction, you have to do a lot, to uh, pay a lot, but then you will get a sustainable and a long life results. Uh, all the governor has to balance what to do what and when, and to go and assess their, and, uh, assess their actions, what is left, what can be done, and always give commercial and physical the same uh, weight until they are decreasing annually what is targeted from them. Excellent, thank you. Um, I've got a, a kind of a final question I wanna ask, but before I do that, if there's a couple of um, comments I'd like to hear you all address. You know, um, first of all, I think, Palmer, can you just summarize the key objectives of the non-revenue water reduction strategy for us? Yes. So I, I maybe quickly describe this. As we said, we had uh, before the strategy any clear approach on how to address the revenue water, which was mainly driven on investment, which is basically rehabilitation of water networks, some restructuring replacement. But there was no clear approach for all utilities and even the different management level in the sector, how you can approach the revenue water and who really is involved on the revenue water management. Uh, that's why we had to make uh, the to streamline the efforts very clearly, because the context is Jordan is different than other uh, many other utilities in the developed countries. We don't have a well structured network. We don't have a, a, a continuous supply. Uh, we have an issue with the metering, illegal use. So utilities were unclear on how to approach this, actually, uh, where I need to start. There is big gaps and limited resources. 
in terms of financial and the human and the water. So that's why there was a need to basically to unify the approach, to having a clear understanding how we can manage this within, within that context. That's why we have to develop something maybe really unique uh, that this is the approach within this context that we can help you. Because, for example, the foundation task in the, in the in the net revenue strategy, this in many countries is actually they don't think about it. It's already in a place. No, in fact, but in Jordan, we don't have a restructured network. In many utilities, we have a problem of uh, uh, locating the customers and uh, finding them. We don't have the right resources institutionally. We don't have uh, any sufficient measurement and monitoring. So that's why we have to address it in a comprehensive way. That's where we needed the needs. And of course, we need to have uh, a clarity on how we can prioritize and setting the, the actions later on. Okay, great. And then one final question before I just sort of wrap things up because we have five minutes left to go. But I think that what's been clear to me is that there has been some pretty significant shifts as a result, just in the last even kind of year and a half. So I'd love for you all to each, can you give me one sentence or just very quickly, what do, what have you seen as the biggest change within your respective institutions as a result of kind of this new focus and this new approach to non-revenue water with the strategy and with governance? Um, and I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna take it from the national level on down. So I wanna start Mona with you. I would picture it as a frame. It's a four pillar frame that has pieces of puzzles inside. Uh, so this is the four pillars of the strategy, and every company has a part of a share of these pieces of puzzles. It was never holistic. We had never seen this uh, holistic but yet well-defined uh, strategy that has this uh, very um, um, direct approach for an action plan. So it was really uh, helpful. And now the results are more oriented. People are knowing if I do this and this, then this result will be uh, achieved. So this is this one never happened before. Uh, so this is what I'm picturing uh, the new strategy. It's a puzzle with four pillars. Excellent, thank you, Abdullah. For you, what's the biggest change you've seen within Miahona? Yes, I, 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 I already mentioned that we are working now as a team. We are working as. Uh, uh, we do have the target. We are uh, uh, working forward the, the target. Uh, we are monitoring the achievement month by month, actually, in Miahuna internally. Uh, and uh, I, I just want to mention something. Uh, uh, I don't know if it is the, 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 the suitable place to, to talk, which is the, 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 uh, regarding the challenge that we are facing. Actually, it is, is the tariff of, of water in, in Jordan. Yeah, it is very uh, cheap the water in Jordan uh, and that uh, put a lot of uh, pressure for, to the government for subsidies uh, if we can work on the, 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 the tariff of water that might help us uh, a lot uh, regarding the investment part uh, yani if we do have uh, good money we can work uh, better and better so uh, this is my point of view I forgot to mention before that's great. And Ghazi, what about you when, from terms of the, the smaller utilities at the governor level? Anyway, you know, I can't tell you that uh, starting from the year 2022, I started here hearing that everybody is working for action plan. You know, that before that, I can't tell you that none of the governorates prepared a, an action plan. Yes, it was not the real one, but at least they started, you know, understanding that how to do it, how to tackle this. You know, the, the first, the first uh, action plan that's been prepared in 2022, the majority of actions were capital investment. When they did prepare the, the newest, the, the new one, you know, for 2023, 2024, they started asking how to do it. And we used to respond with with them, you know, in order that you have to start with your actual situation. You have to put for yourself targets. Then there's a gap. Then you will start preparing or 
writing what is the actions in order to achieve these goals. So for me, the understanding that they have to do something regarding NRW and that it's the business for everybody. It's not the business for any, for one department. It's for uh, everybody in the unit. Terrific, thank you. You. What about you, Tom? Or do you, just as kind of as a as somebody who's worked in the sector for a long time, but not necessarily within any of these specific institutions, what do you see as the biggest kind of shift, the biggest change? Well, maybe it's in line of my colleagues. The biggest change is that uh, there is now a better uh, and common understanding on how to address non-revenue water uh, in a holistic approach. Uh, it, Previously, it was really unstructured. Un, uh, now we have a very uh, more structured and better knowledge on how to address really the revenue. And the big change that management and different leaders starting understanding this and becoming uh, basically more commitment and willing actually to, to do the efforts because now they start understanding what, what is my role out of this. Previously, it was not clear. Now it's become much, much clearer, I would say. And it's, it continues to be improving. Excellent. So we're at time. I just want to say a couple of quick closing words. I mean, I think what became very, very clear throughout the presentation is that the governance framework of the non-revenue water strategy, redu reduction strategy, and the commitment, most importantly, that it represented on the part of the government of Jordan that has slowed down very specifically and directly into the water utilities has been really fundamental in changing the way in which the country is dealing with what is probably one of the single biggest issues facing the water sector. You know, as Abdullah said, every drop of water recovered from non-revenue water is essentially new supply. And in a way, really cheap new supply because it's already being produced. And it's just being lost right now in the system in one way, shape, or form. It's the it's the, the best new supply that can be created, right? And so I think that this is a great step forward. Um, I want to thank very, very much every single one of our panelists here today. I hope that you all enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, the contact information, we're, we're all available for ongoing conversations if, if you'd like. For those participants, I think everybody's uh, registered in the the um, presenters list and in the participant list. So thank you again for your time. Thank you again, Amr, Abdullah, Ghazi, and Mona. It's been lovely. Have a great day, everybody. Thank, thank you. you all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all.